All right, at this point you should have your advanced drawing template created and open properly. Uh, and again, if it's open properly, you'll see two tabs. This one, drawing one being the original file, then drawing two being the save as file. You gotta be careful how we open these. Also, we should have all our layers created here and the default should be set to construction. And if we come down here and click the layout one tab, you should see that we have a title box with our info and the date and all that in place. So to get started with what we're going to do the second quarter, we're going to start with orthographic views and how to take an orthographic view and make it a multi-view drawing. So to better explain that, let's look at the drawing we're going to do today. So this drawing has been drawn in orthographic view or an orthographic projection. So basically 3D for lack of better words. And what we want to do as an end result is take the 3D model, okay, and draw it looking at the sides. So if this is the side view, it's kind of an L shape. All right, the top view, we would see everything here on the top. All right, then an end view looking in from the end. And if we go back and forth between the two images, here's our side view right here. Okay, we got a top view and we got an end view. And you'll notice with these views that they are lined up. Okay, so this bottom line runs straight across, and this other line runs vertically here. So they're lined up. This one isn't like sitting over or anything like that. So again, this is an orthographic view. This is a multi-view drawing with a side, top, and end view. So we're going to go ahead and get started by creating that. And we'll use this to get our information from. So let's jump back over to CAD here and get started. To get started, we're going to draw a few guidelines or construction lines to help us get started. <coughs> Excuse me. So to do that, I'm going to come up here to my draw section of my toolbar, and I'm going to hit the draw drop down, and I'm going to start by drawing a construction line. Choose it. I'm going to right click. I'm going to choose horizontal or vertical. We'll start with the um, horizontal ones first. So there's a horizontal construction line. It travels infinitely in either direction. And I'm just going to pick a place here on my screen to get started. Then from there I'm going to hit escape. Back up here to draw. Grab another construction line. Right click and choose a vertical um, construction line and place it somewhere here around the origin. Okay with that we're done. We can hit escape. Now we're going to offset our outside guidelines. So let's look back here at the drawing. Um, so if we're looking at the side view of this, we can see the max length is 5 inches. Okay. Then the width of this part, it looks like we can see here the widest point is 3 inches. So let's take those two numbers and come back in here to CAD. So I'm going to do an offset of 5 inches. So choose offset and 5, enter. I'm going to offset this vertical line to the right 5 inches. I'm going to offset again. This time I'm going to choose an inch and a half. And I got that number, just it's an arbitrary number to space the views apart. Okay, that's just a spacing gap. Now I'm going to offset again, and I'm going to type in that 3 inch number that we found on the drawing. So there is our side view max width and our in view max width. So let's look at our heights. Let's go back to that drawing. So if we look at the height, we can see the total height is two and a half inches. Okay, for the side view. Then the top view it would be three inches again. So let's take those two numbers and come back over here. We're going to offset 2.5. And this time we're choosing the horizontal line and we're going to bring it up. Then hit escape. I'm going to offset again. This time it'll be that 1.5. Again, that's just for spacing purposes. It could be any distance, it doesn't really matter, but one and a half will work. And we're gonna offset three inches. All right, so let me just zoom in here a little bit and hit escape. Now that I have my boundary boxes set, this just kind of helps me draw a little bit easier, I think, to help get us focused. <coughs> so after I have those, I'm gonna come up here to my layer and I'm now gonna choose my object line layer. I'm going to choose a line tool and I'm just going to come outline my basic shapes here. So I'm just going to outline my rectangles. So there's one. I'm going to outline this one. Okay. And I'm going to outline my third one. Just draw the rectangle. And depending on the drawing, these could be different shapes, but today they're rectangles and squares. 
So once I have that, I'm good to go. If this line weight being so thick is annoying, you should have turned on line weight uh, when we created the template. If not, you can come over here, make sure line weight is checked. That'll give us this little dialog box here. We can toggle the line weight off or on. Okay, keep that in mind. Now that I have my four basic shapes outlined, we're simply just going to go back and forth between the drawing and the CAD file, adding details, focusing on one view at a time. So we're going to start by focusing on this this side view right here. So if we come back over here and look, uh, the next big detail we need to note is this little gap here. All right, that's a quarter inch wide. All right, and the next little note we'll need to make note of here is this taper that starts, and that's an inch and three quarters. So we're going to go ahead and check that out. Also, the other thing is the thickness of this base. All right, and we don't see a number for that right over here, but if we look over here on the side, they put the one inch marker right here. So let's take those three numbers and come back and add some detail. I'm just going to do that by offsetting. So offset one inch. Okay, and I'm going to bring the bottom line up. Okay, and then I'm going to offset. Let's go back here and look. The, the thickness or the width of this part here is one inch as well. So let's offset that one inch. Get a hold of that line. And there we go. We'll come back in and add this little detail here in a minute, but there's the rough shape. So let's go ahead and trim that. There's, there, that looks better. All right, I'm going to turn my line weight off. I think that's a little bit annoying. Next thing that I want to do is come up here and we'll add some detail to this top view real quick. And I'm going to start by coming down here and inferring from this point. All right, I'm going to push straight up. See how it gives me the green dotted line with the X. If you do not get that, you want to make sure you have object snap tracking turned on and polar tracking turned on. I'm going to infer from here, push straight up and click. I'm going to draw my line just like so. Now I'm going to do an offset. Again, I'm just adding details going back and forth from this drawing here. I'm just looking at stuff. So the next detail is the inch wide parts. <coughs> so I'm going to offset one. Offset and offset. We just divided it in three sections basically. The next thing we want to work on is our little taper here. You can see how it tapers in. Uh, looks like a quarter inch by one and three quarters. So we can do that. That's kind of tricky. So I'm going to grab my line tool and I'm going to choose snap from. And I'm going to start on this point here. So snap from this point and I'm going to choose at um, 0 comma negative 0.25 alright that's my first point a quarter inch down and my next point would be snap from at um, negative 1.75 comma 0 I had to think about that for a second and it looks like I messed that up Nope, there it went. I clicked. All right, so that looks good. So I'm going to repeat the same thing here on the bottom. All right, so now that we got both of these tapers done, okay, and again, I'm just looking here, and it's a quarter inch and one and three quarters. All right, the coordinates, you just have to switch them, okay, or you can cheat and draw some extra lines and erase those. I'm going to go ahead and trim. Get rid of this little part here, here here and here. Okay, I can turn my line weight back on if that helps you see things a little bit better. Again, to get those tapers, I'm just using a line tool and the snap from and some coordinates. If you don't like that, that's okay. You can do it the way you f think is best. All right, I'm, now I'm going to draw a circle. All right, the circle's going to have a diameter of one, so I'm going to take that. I want to say snap from this point. And I'm going to put at uh, negative 2.25, comma, negative 1.5. Give me my center point, then a diameter of 1. And that will locate that circle for me. And the last thing there, I just need to do a little more trimming. 
I'm going to get rid of this piece and this piece right here. I'm going to get rid of these two lines here now. I don't need them any longer. And I don't think I have things properly selected for trimming, so I'm going to reselect here. Get rid of that piece and that piece. There, that looks better. The last thing I want to do is create my little indent. So let's look at the original drawing here, this little indent. Okay, and it comes in a quarter and is a half inch deep. So let's go ahead and offset for that. So I'm going to offset 0.25. All right, now we're going to offset a half an inch, 0.5. And it gets it kind of confusing, so I'm going to turn my line weight off again. Now I'm just going to trim and clean this up. There we go. Get rid of that. Click and delete that guy. Oh... Uh, Get rid of him, him, and him. So just go through and trim this, and I'll turn my line weight back on so you can see it here a little bit better in a second. I'm just going to physically click and delete these two extra pieces of line. Let's turn line weight back on. Oop, there I accidentally clicked something I shouldn't have. So I'm just going to take this line here and extend it up, grabbing the handle. Now there's our finished top view. Now the reason I didn't add that detail down here, and again I'm going to turn that line weight off because it's ridiculously thick for this, I can infer. So if I grab my line tool, I can infer, bring this down, and draw the line until I intersect. All right. That looks good. Now I'm going to leave that go until I can infer and bring in some other information from over here on this this view here. Okay. The next thing that we want to do, and this makes things super handy, I'm going to switch back to my construction layer. I'm going to grab a regular line, and I'm going to draw a, a line from corner to corner of this box right here. What this does, this creates a miter, and what it will allow us to do is to offset points along this drawing then translate them at 90 degrees down to this drawing so that we don't miss any details so I'll show you how we can do that again you're still in a construction layer we're going to come back in here to a construction line and we're going to do a horizontal construction line first so we already have our outmost point because we have a gray line here we're going to come into our next major intersection which would be here and click to place a line then we're going to come down to this next major intersection where something happens and click same here, then we want to grab our midpoint of our circle, go back to this point, and it's just a mirrored image then at this point. Bring all those lines over. Okay, so play basically any time there's a change in the line work, you're going to click to translate this over. Now the neat part is we're going to grab another construction line and just set it to vertical. And we're just going to follow up this miter line. Any place there's an intersection or green X, we're going to click minus the outside two lines. Now, everywhere there's a line on this end view, we need to create some sort of matching line. Okay, it's some sort of detail it has to show through. So let's grab a couple ones that are easy to get first. I'll turn my line weight back on to help, help us see that a little bit more. The first we're going to do, we're going to translate this line over. I'm going to grab that hover. Oops, and I didn't click and change my layer to my object layer. So if you do the same thing, you can click the line, come up here and change the layer. All right, and it'll manually shift it to the appropriate layer for one time. Then if you remember, hey, I need to be on object lines, so you need to come up here and change that permanently. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do is just grab my line tool and fill in my other hard lines that we need to have here. Now that we drew that short line first, we're going to come in here and fill in this with an object line, so that's where that little taper is. Okay, if you can see the taper here, that's this line and this point right here. Alright, and it would be the same on the other side because it's a mirrored image. Alright, the next place we need to have a line is at the edge of our circle. Okay, so this line we're drawing is this long line here. 
And the same with here. 